Assalamualaikum dear students welcome to the online lecture on nonlinear control systems this is lecture number six of the course last time we were discussing the concept of stability and asymptotic stability we looked at uh, the definitions and the practical uh, and the graphical demonstration of the stability and asymptotic stability stability requires that if your initial condition is within certain bound delta then your trajectory must stay within the another bound epsilon and for every single epsilon there should be some delta such that if you start within delta then you stay within epsilon asymptotic stability requires in addition to stability there should be some neighborhood of the origin uh, of the equilibrium point uh, called eta so that if you start within eta then you actually converge or attracted to the equilibrium point next we uh, look at how can we characterize or calculate the stability uh, because obviously if you try to characterize the stability of linear or nonlinear systems using the definition itself then <clears throat> you know the number of epsilons and number of deltas are infinite so you can often run into trouble by you know yeah, the overwhelming number of cases that you have to show stability for um, anyways so we have uh, a certain theorem that we can use to characterize or calculate or analyze the stability of a nonlinear system. Uh, the theorem is uh, in such a way that assume that x e equal to 0 is an equilibrium point of x dot equal f of x and assume that there exists an open set d about the origin. So this is the neighborhood of the origin such that within that neighborhood the function f is locally Lipschitz so this requirement will ensure that within the d neighborhood of the origin uh, the solution of the differential equation will exist and will be unique the second condition of the theorem is that there should exist a continuously differentiable function v uh, that works within the neighborhood and it is a scalar function scalar valued function so v could be any function that satisfies the following properties first of all v of 0 could be 0 uh, v of 0 must be 0 and v of x must be uh, greater than 0 for all the values of x other than 0 inside the neighborhood d of the equilibrium point the third and final condition on v is that the derivative of v must be less than or equal to 0 for all x in the neighborhood d of the uh, origin so if these three if you are able to find such a differentiable continuously differentiable function v which satisfies all these three properties then the, you can conclude that the equilibrium point of this uh, differential equation is stable in the sense of Lyapunov now what is what is important about this theorem first of all if you are to characterize the stability of this differential equation using the epsilon delta definition then you have to calculate the solution of x dot equal f of x like you will have to calculate x of t for all time and then you you will be putting like uh, initial conditions and testing whether you know a certain bound on initial condition ensures another bound on the trajectory or not and so on uh, so that will be really difficult to do but here you don't have to calculate the solution of this differential equation without calculating x of t you just have to find a function a continuously differentiable scalar function which operates on the vector x and gives a certain scalar value uh, for example v could be the norm of uh, this x vector so v of 0 must be 0 uh, v of x must be greater than 0 it means that v must be a positive definite function and if the derivative of v turns out to be negative semi-definite then uh, it is mathematically proven like you know this this theorem is a mathematically proven fact that if you find this function with these three properties then it is uh, given 
that the it implies that the equilibrium point xe is stable in the sense of lyapunov moreover in addition if v dot is strictly negative uh, like not negative semi definite but negative definite for for all x in the neighborhood d of the equilibrium point uh, other than the value x equal to 0 then the you can conclude asymptotic stability of the equilibrium point so this is a, this is a, a huge result and it's, it's been used for decades in the nonlinear control systems theory and so you know very useful in terms of you know that you don't have to calculate the trajectory of the system for uh, characterizing the stability uh, next we have a remark that v dot is uh, the derivative of the Lyapunov function with respect to time and uh, that will be dv by dt and you can calculate dv by dt by chain rule uh, which is dv by dx times dx by dt so that will do so v dot will be uh, partial v by partial x times f of x so this is the way we would be con uh, calculating the derivative of the Lyapunov function in this course next we define global asymptotic stability so we we have already defined the asymptotic stability uh, so global asymptotic stability is uh, just the asymptotic stability with infinite uh, region of attraction so suppose xe is the um, as equilibrium point of uh, x dot equal f of x then it will be globally asymptotically stable if first of all it has to be stable in the sense of Lyapunov secondly for all initial conditions x naught in rn the trajectory must exist on for all time so uh, global asymptotic stability requires global existence and uniqueness of uh, the differential equation and then the third is that you know for all initial conditions this uh, trajectory converges to the equilibrium point which is uh, zero so xe is zero here so uh, so let me just fix this uh, x e equal zero is globally asymptotic stable equilibrium point of x dot equal f of x so um, I apologize for this uh, you know these slides are not not very comprehensive uh, but I hope that you know you get the point that this is the equilibrium point of x dot equal f of x so and then if if these three conditions are satisfied that uh, first of all the equilibrium point must be stable uh, secondly it uh, the, the the solution of the differential equation must exist for all time and in all initial conditions and then the third is the region of attraction d is is in is infinite so wherever you start where for all initial conditions the trajectory goes to zero so no no matter where the trajectory begins it always ends up converging to the equilibrium point that's asympto global asymptotic stability then there is the theorem uh, which we can use to to calculate to calculate the global asymptotic stability uh, the theorem says that if if x e is, is is equal to zero is an equilibrium point of the differential equation and v is some continuously differential uh, differentiable function such that v of zero is zero v of x is greater than zero for all uh, for all r n so so here there is no neighborhood of the equilibrium point uh, the these conditions have to be satisfied globally and then v dot has to be strictly less than zero and these are the conditions very similar to the asymptotic stability conditions uh, except that instead of a neighborhood d of the equilibrium point we have the whole rn but there is another final fourth condition which requires that v of x must be radially unbounded which means that uh, whenever x norm goes to infinity that should imply that v of x also goes to infinity so this is basically um, the the special condition for uh, global asymptotic stability which is uh, 
which is required because you know if if v of x is not guaranteed to go to infinity as x goes to infinity then there could be some loophole uh, through which you know x will uh, go to infinity and we would uh, not be able to uh, detect that from the v function uh, then uh, x e is equal to zero so if these four conditions are satisfied then x e is equal to zero is globally asymptotically stable and then now let's do an example of uh, characterizing stability so this this is very important so i want to spend a little bit more time on this you know uh, characterizing the asymptotic stability requires these three conditions and the asym the the global asymptotic stability also require v of x to be radially unbounded which means that v of x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity so you can also read this condition as x going to infinity implies that v of x will also go to infinity so it cannot happen that x goes to infinity and v of x remains finite it can it it, it must not happen so let's look at an example of a spring mass system for a spring mass system you have you know some uh, k function of the spring and you have this uh, acceleration of the mass and the position of the mass is x so the spring function is defined in such a way that you know it is positive in the neighborhood or uh, you know whenever the value of x is between 0 to d if x goes beyond d the spring be become distorted or you know it the spring malfunctions is it's uh, deformed so within the limits of the spring this spring function is positive whenever x is positive and negative whenever x is negative so plus minus d are the limits uh, up to which you can extend or compress the spring so uh, this type of uh, spring function this gives us this that uh, the fact that you know x times k of x will always be positive whenever x is uh, the whenever the magnitude of x is less than d so this is the setup of the example and next we uh, look at the differential equation that governs this uh, this system this physical system mx double dot plus bx dot plus k x k of x is equal to zero where b is the coefficient of friction so we are assuming non-zero friction in this system so non-zero friction uh, will ensure certain behavior that whenever you uh, disturb this system it will always come back to rest okay now convert this system into state space by defining uh, x is equal to x1 and x2 x x1 is equal to x and x2 is equal to x dot uh, you can get you can easily convert this so x1 dot will be x2 and x2 dot will be x double dot which will be um, equal to minus k of x1 divided by m minus b of x2 divided by m uh, this comes from this equation and then let <coughs> let us define the uh, Lyapunov function to be uh, the sum of kinetic energy and the potential energy of this spring mass system uh, kinetic energy and potential energy Lyapunov function uh, has been considered uh, for a long time as a, as a good uh, intuition of uh, uh, defining Lyapunov function uh, because you know if you define the Lyapunov function as the sum of potential and kinetic energy of a mechanical system then if it's if the derivative of energy is negative then that means that you know energy is decreasing and if the energy is decreasing then most probably the system is coming to rest and coming to the equilibrium point so so if this is a Lyapunov function one half m x two square plus uh, integral of zero to x one k tau d tau then we check the condition for uh, stability in the local region what is the local region local region is the value of x1 and x2 such that x1 is bounded between plus and minus d but there is no bound on x2 so this is the local region 
and in this region if you look at you know v of 0 comma 0 if x1 x2 both are 0 this term will be will be 0 when x2 is 0 and this term will be 0 when x1 is 0 so v of 0 comma 0 is 0 so first condition of the Lyapunov stability theorem is satisfied next you can see obviously uh, this is the kinetic energy and potential energy so they, this function is positive definite indeed other than the value zero in the neighborhood uh, of the origin finally the derivative of the Lyapunov function is uh, calculated using the chain rule partial v by partial x1 times x1 dot plus partial v by partial x2 times x2 dot partial v by partial x1 is simply k of x1 and partial v by partial x2 is uh, you know m times x2 so this is the m times x2 is the partial v by partial x2 this times x2 dot this is the whole equation and if you cancel this k of x1 term uh, then uh, v dot is simply equal to minus b times x2 square and if you look at this 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 is negative semi definite because it is uh, it is negative for all non zero values of x2 and it is zero for all zero values of x2 whereas x1 could be non zero so so for all uh, possible values of x1 x1 magnitude less than d along with x2 equal to zero v dot is zero so overall v dot is less than or equal to zero for all x1 x2 in the neighborhood of the origin so what we conclude is stability in the sense of Lyapunov so according to the Lyapunov theorem using this Lyapunov function we've come to conclusion <coughs> that uh, the system is uh, stable in the sense of Lyapunov but uh, here if you uh, know the spring mass system with uh, you know non-zero friction uh, so far we are only able to prove the stability in the sense of Lyapunov but we know from our general knowledge that the spring mass system with positive coefficient of friction is asymptotically stable which means that it basically comes back to its original position which is the equilibrium point so potential energy plus kinetic energy is not always a good Lyapunov function so this example shows us that uh, the, the potential energy and, and the kinetic energy is, is not always a good Lyapunov function uh, the stability results obtained through Lyapunov function may not be so this uh, we also learn from this example that you know uh, selecting a certain Lyapunov function may not give us the the strongest possible stability for the system uh, so this is a problem with uh, you know selection of the Lyapunov function so how do we deal with this problem so how do we find the strongest form of stability for any system we either have to find a better Lyapunov function which gives us you know stronger results or we have to use a different theorem so in this lecture we would only look at the first option um, finding a better Lyapunov function but in the later lecture uh, we will also look at uh, some other theorem other than the Lyapunov theorem uh, that will help us uh, conclude stronger form of stability for the system using the same Lyapunov function so let's uh, continue and we take another Lyapunov function which is you know 1 over m times integral of 0 to x1 k tau d tau this is 1 over m times the potential energy plus this quadratic term so this is a, a, this is a term which involve x1 square x2 square and x1 x2 this is a positive uh, definite symmetric matrix uh, because you can see here that this term is positive and overall the, this two are equal to each other so matrix is also symmetric so we are going to use this Lyapunov function now for the same system we check the conditions so v of 0 comma 0 if you look at you know if you put both x1 x2 equal to 0 this whole term will be 0 and this term will be 0 because of x1 equal to 0 so v of 0 comma 0 is 0 
next is v of x1 x2 is greater than 0 in the neighborhood uh, d of the origin y because this is positive definite matrix so this whole product will be a positive scalar and this already we know that this is potential energy times 1 over mass so this is going to be positive so the <coughs> so Lyapunov function is positive in the neighborhood of the the origin next is v dot if you calculate the derivative of v partial v by partial x1 and partial v uh, partial v by partial x1 times x1 dot plus partial v by partial x2 times x2 dot and after certain simplifications it will turn out to be this expression where v dot is minus b over 2m times x1 into k of x1 minus b over 2 times uh, 2m times uh, x2 square so this term is easy the x2 square always negative always positive so a minus on this term will ensure that this is always negative and this term we all we know from our spring mass example that in the neighborhood d x times k of x will be positive because locally whenever x is positive k is positive and whenever x is negative k is negative so that means that this is also always positive a minus sign here will ensure that overall it is negative so v dot is negative definite and uh, uh, other than you know the value other than the case when both x1 and x2 are zero which is the origin or the equilibrium point other than the equilibrium point at all the points in the in the neighborhood d of the equilibrium point v dot is strictly negative so that means that the system is or the origin is asymptotically stable equilibrium point so we have proved uh, we have proven uh, the uh, asymptotic stability of the equilibrium point using this uh, quadratic Lyapunov function and that is the end of this lecture and next time we will also look at uh, a different theorem which will help us you know determine the asymptotic stability without having to define a new Lyapunov function so let's just uh, quickly go through what we have discussed today so we have uh, revised the graphical uh, demonstration of the concept of stability and the concept of asymptotic stability we have defined you know the, our first uh, Lyapunov theorem for characterizing the stability it requires v of 0 it requires you to find a Lyapunov function such that v of 0 is 0 v of x is greater than 0 and v dot of x is less than or equal to 0 and if v dot is strictly less than 0 then we can conclude asymptotic stability for the equilibrium point next we have discussed the uh, well how to calculate v dot that is partial v by partial x times f of x and we have also discussed uh, the definition of global asymptotic stability which is basically uh, stability plus global attractivity and in order to characterize the global asymptotic stability we have uh, you know four conditions v of 0 equals 0 v of x greater than 0 v dot strictly less than 0 and radially unbounded property of the Lyapunov function and then we looked at this example where we define you know the spring function is such that in the neighborhood of the origin uh, k times x is always positive and then we uh, looked at the differential equation and the state space form of this system and we defined a energy based Lyapunov function and that in the neighborhood only could lead us to the conclusion of uh, simple stability in the sense of Lyapunov but we know from our general knowledge that you know with positive friction it is asymptotically stable so how do we you know find the strongest form of stability property we use different Lyapunov function we use the quadratic Lyapunov function and with that function we are able to uh, 
prove that you know v dot is v dot is a negative definite in the neighborhood of the equilibrium point so we are able to conclude asymptotic stability for this system thank you for watching this lecture uh, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to you know uh, get notified when the next lecture is online thank you